Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us see what are stem tendrils. The word tendril, tendril is, I mean it is related to the word tender. Tender means something which is soft and delicate, right? So even tendrils are the same. So these kind of st stems are extremely soft, delicate, they can take any other shape they want. I mean, not in the sense that since they are very soft and very flexible, they can wrap themselves around any other object. And that is how they solve the purpose of climbing. So basically, these are slender and spirally coiled stems. So as I showed you in the previous slide that they were spirally coiled structures and they are quite thin, not very thick stems. They develop from axillary buds. So now you understand the significance why I explained to you about axillary and terminal buds. So now you all know what are axillary buds. They are the buds which are present at the axle of a leaf. So why are the axle of a leaf? These places are called the axle of leaves. So you have axillary buds here. So these stem tendrils also develop from these axillary buds. So basically, we can say that stem tendril is nothing but a modified branch as it develops in place of a branch because from an axillary bud what happens like suppose if this is an axillary bud so it gradually grows to up to form another branch and that branch will again bear leaves fruits flowers and whatever so instead of that branch we actually have stem tendril so we can say that stem tendril is nothing but a modified branch now when this stem tendril comes in contact with some neighboring object it coils around it and starts climbing. Right? So examples of stem tendrils would be a grapevine. You would have seen grapevines growing like this. You see, this is a, some support. It got some pillar-like structure. And these vines started wrapping around it. See how it has wrapped around it. So these are examples of stem tendrils. So basically these kind of uh, climbers. So now you, you will actually see that roots are also modified to form climbing structures. We already saw, right? When we were talking about, when we were talking about the uh, different modifications of roots, we actually saw that roots are also used for providing mechanical support or they are also used as climbing roots. You remember? So, similarly, stems are also modified to form climbing stems or climbers. But in some plants, for example, in grapevine, it is the stem which is modified to form climber. Whereas, in case of roots, we saw that there were some other plants where the roots secrete some substances and that is, why they, that is how they help the plant to climb on surfaces. So, one example where the roots act as climbers was the beetle leaf. So in different plants, different parts of the plant get modified to perform various functions. Okay, so this was all about stem tendril. So let us look at the next modification that is the stem thorns. So stem thorns are another special modification of the stem which helps in serving a special purpose of protection. So what are these? These are thorns are nothing but woody and pointed structures. Now in case of roots also, we saw that some of the roots get modified to form uh, such structures which actually help in protection, right? We took the example of cactus where we saw that uh, they got modified into these kind of structures. So here also we will see in stem thorns, what happens? They also develop from axillary buds they ensure protection of plants. How do they ensure protection of plants? Because when you have such pointed structures on the surface of the plant, so it actually helps to protect the plant from, from other animals which might come and eat up the plant because when there are sp spiky structures or pointed structures, they'll get hurt. So they'll have that fear of getting hurt and they'll not disturb the plant. So that means it protects from external damages. So when the thorns are deep seated in the plant, so and these thorns have 
are connected to the vascular tissue. Vascular tissue are the xylem and the phloem. It basically, some thorns may even bear leaves, fruits and flowers. So in some plants, not in all plants, in some plants they might bear. So examples of thorns, or rather stem thorns, here you can see. In this plant, if you see, these are the stem thorns, these spiny or pointed structures present on the plant. So these are the stem thorns. So examples where, of plants where you can see stem thorns are uh, peach and berry or the wild cherry. So here you can see this is the peach and berry. So in this plant you can actually see those pointed structures present here. So these pointed structures will actually act as organs of defense. Wild cherry, pigeon berry are some of the examples where we see stem thorns. Let us look at the next modification called the phyllothlates. Now these phyllothlates are also little similar to stem thorns but again in some way it is different as well. So here you can see the picture of a cactus. So we will see in cactus also we have thorny structures on the surface, right? So let us see what are they. So here complete stem is fleshy and cylindrical. So if you look at a cactus plant, you will see that the entire stem is fleshy and the stem is also cylindrical. They also carry out photosynthesis due to the presence of the green colored pigment called chlorophyll. So here the leaves are again modified to spines to reduce transpiration. So here the spines not only solve the purpose of uh, protection, it also is used to reduce transpiration. What is transpiration? Transpiration is nothing but the loss of water from the plant through the surface of the leaf. Now instead of leaf, you have thorns here. So the amount of water which is lost from the leaves get reduced because there are no leaves here, instead there are spines. So that means it reduces transpiration. Some leaves fall off early even before they get modified to spines. These kind of uh, plants are generally seen in regions where there is less water. So in regions where there, are, there is less water, if too much of transpiration take place, then it will become difficult for the plant because very less amount of water will be left with the plant. So these kind of plants where the leaves get modified into spines, which in turn helps to reduce transpiration, becomes very, very useful for plants in arid regions. Arid regions are the regions with less water. So leaves are modified to spines, a very good example is a cactus. So when I say cactus, cactus in, in cactus, what kind of stem modification is present? So the stem modification which is seen in a cactus is not a stem thorn. Instead, it is a phyllothlate because this is the name given to this kind of modification where the leaves are modified to spine. So here it is not the stem which is modified to spine. So did you understand the difference between stem thorns and phyllothlates? In stem, uh, in stem thorns example, you saw that the stems are modified into thorns. I mean, or the thorns are present on the stems. So please understand this difference. When I talk about cactus, it is the leaves. It, it are, these are the leaves which are modified into spines. So it is not the stems which are modified into spines. But when I was talking about stem thorns, it was the stem which was modified into pointed structures called thorns. So that is why stem thorns were seen in plants like uh, the berry or the cherry. But phyllothlates or uh, this uh, cactus, in cactus, these are the leaves which get modified into spines. So what is the modification? What type of modification does a stem have in case of cactus? The stem is fleshy and the stem carries out photosynthesis. These are the modifications of the stem. So you understand the difference in, in a plant like cactus, the modification of the stem is phyllothlate. That is, it carries out photosynthesis and it is fleshy and cylindrical. Whereas the leaves are modified into spines. I hope I am able to clear this because many people get confused that stem thorns, example of stem thorns should be a cactus because in cactus we have thorns. 
but those thorns are not modification of stem they are modification of leaves okay so let us look at the next um, kind of stem modification that is cladode so what is a cladode so here only some part of the now this cladode is very similar to it is some to some extent similar to a phylloclad in a cladode not the entire stem is fleshy and cylindrical only some part of the stem is fleshy and green green means presence of chlorophyll so some flowers appear singly at the center of cladodes during spring so if you see here in this picture this is the picture of a cladode so you can see flowers appearing singly at the center of cladodes so these are cladodes so some, as I said, some part of the stem is fleshy and cylindrical. So in those cladodes, you can actually see flowers appearing singly. So one single flower is there, right? So they carry out photosynthesis. Obviously, when they are green, when they have chlorophyll, they are capable of carrying out photosynthesis. They resemble to a leaf. So structure-wise or look-wise, they look very similar to a leaf. Right, you can see here in this picture itself, you might have thought that they are nothing but leaves, but basically they are not leaves. They are modification of stems, which because of their green color and because of their shape, they look very similar to a leaf. So how do, from where do they develop? They also develop at the axle of a reduced leaf. So basically this from the same place or from the same nodes from where new branches appear, from there only these cladodes also appear. So, an example of a cladode would be a ruscus. So, examples of cladode would include um, ruscus or the lily family. So, they all have these kind of modification of stem. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.